Hey guys and welcome to my revamped Kiln Guard for 2019. When you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. First, I'll be getting into the requirements. If you want to go to any specific part of this guide, check the description below for timestamps. Anyways, you're required to have completed the Elder Kiln quest, which doesn't take very long, but does require level 75 magic, 61 agility, and 41 mining to complete. You also require to have one fire cape for a one-time sacrifice for the Elder Kiln minigame. If you're interested in a guide for the fight caves to obtain a fire cape, check the description below. Now, as the Fight Kiln is a very high level combat minigame, I do suggest you do have high combat stats before attempting the Fight Kiln. I recommend 70 plus Prayer, 92 and 96 would be better if you have Curses unlocked for Soul Split and Turmoil and such. 80 plus combat stats, as without these stats, you're probably going to have a very hard time, and unless you're experienced, there's no way you're going to be finishing the Fight Kiln without those stats. 67 plus summoning for a BOB familiar or maybe even a DPS familiar if you're very good at the fight kiln, but then you're probably not watching this guide. The BOB familiar will help you out with extra food you will be needing during the fight kiln. And 96 plus herb lore for overloads of course. Now there are a bunch of useful items that can help and benefit you in the fight kiln. These are some of the main ones. Weapon poison plus plus potions, as the monsters inside the fight kiln can actually be poisoned. Obsidian armor is also extremely useful because it gives a whopping 45% damage reduction, excluding the shield of course, in the fight kiln, which is amazing and will make it so easy that you can almost AFK the fight kiln. The Tokol Zo is also a useful item. This is a ring you obtain from the Elder Kiln quest, and it must be charged for that 10% damage boost inside the fight kiln. Now, you know how we talked about poison just a second ago? Cinderbane gloves are absolutely amazing in the fight kiln, as they automatically poison the monsters you are fighting absolutely destroying them and eating up damage. Overloads of course are also very useful for just immense stat boosting. Curses are useful, PVM auras are extremely useful here, especially the damage boosting auras if you're a high level player and if you're a low level player struggling with food in the fight kiln, the vampirism aura is going to help you out a bunch, as it heals you for the damage that you do, much like soul splits, but it does not require you to have prayer points whatsoever and it also lasts an entire hour unless you extend it to be even longer. And of course PVM and BOB familiars are useful for extra food like I said before. The PVM familiars like Steel Titan or Nihil could be useful. If you're struggling with accuracy, the Nihils will help you out. If you want more damage overall, just use a Steel Titan with the Steel of Legend scrolls and you should be good to go. If you're a lower slash mid-level player attempting this, I always would suggest you use a BOB familiar over any other familiar. We will now be going over some gear setup examples. Do keep in mind there are many many variations in gear and not all gear is listed on this list you see on video now. Now I suggest you just have T80 plus range weapons and armor. A good example of this would just be using a Zarak bow or royal crossbow in conjunction with anima core of Zamrak armor or Pernix armor. You can still get away with tier 70 armor like Armador, but it's just going to make your life so much harder. Another amazing item for the fight kiln would be using a blood amulet of fury as this heals you every 15 seconds or so from the monster's HP around you. This is kind of like a cheap way soul split kind of thing. It's very useful to use in the kiln and I highly suggest you use it. Again, obsidian armor would be the best armor of choice for that 45% damage reduction, but if you do not have the armor like I do, you can use any other armor in game and you should be just as fine. It's not like you really need the obsidian armor anyways. So yeah, let's move on briefly going over the magic and melee gear setups. For magic, it's pretty much the same thing. You want to be using tier 80 plus armor and a tier 80 plus weapon. Though for magic, the good thing is there's a lot of budget options. As an example, a Virtus Wanda book aren't very expensive. Another example would be the Obliteration Staff. This staff is not too much money at all. It's only around 28 million GP. And that's for a tier 87 staff with tier 90 accuracy, which is going to help you heaps at the boss or final boss. As for amulets, by the way, you could use anything better than a blood amulet of fury. If you want to, you can use an amulet of souls, especially if you are using soul split. That's an amazing amulet to use it in combination with. It's all up to you. 
These are just some examples again, and it's one example setup fully on screen. I would highly suggest buying a large rune pouch though, as this item can save you inventory slots for runes. Unless, of course, you're using a staff that gives you runes like the camel staff, armor of battle staff, or elemental staves. As for melee, thanks to the mining and smithing rework, it's much cheaper and easier for Iron Man to get high level melee gear, as you can literally just smith it yourself or buy off the Grand Exchange if you're a normal account for a pretty cheap price. Great armor examples would be Elder Rune Armor, Masterwork Armor if you're a very high level player with lots of money, Bane Armor, or Bane Eye Armor, or Necronium Armor, which is essentially the same tier as Bandos or Barrow's Armor, except for Bandos being DPS armor, of course. Again, for weapons, it's the same thing, but if you're going to be using melee in the fight kiln, I highly suggest you use a halberd-type weapon like a Dragon Rider Lance or Noxious Scythe, as the extra range when using AoE abilities like Cleave, Quake, and Hurricane can help you greatly, especially if you're in a cluster of monsters. The Lance or Halberd-type weapons are also useful because you can actually melee Jad without being in melee distance and him using the melee swipe attack. That is, of course, if you're only standing one tile away from Jad. Do stay alert and stay that one tile away from Jad if you're using one of these types of weapons, though, as you could just be standing in melee distance and he is going to slap you to your death. We will now be getting into some inventory examples and what you should be bringing in your inventory to the fight kiln. So as for inventory setups, there's a mid-level and higher level example on screen now. Though inventory setups are very subjective to how much prayer you would use during your kiln. Now I did keep in mind that a mid-level player would be taking longer over the kiln and therefore would be needing more prayer potions. So I put more super restores slash prayer renewals in the inventory for that extra prayer because you will be taking much longer than a higher level player would with end game or just very high level gear. There are some things you want to definitely include in your inventory, like a melee armor set for that extra melee accuracy when cracking the deals, which I'll be getting into later on. You do need a pickaxe in your tool belt, which is rune or higher for this to work with a melee weapon. So yeah, just keep that in mind. And if you're using a fully melee setup, you will not require that in your inventory, of course. Weapon Poison++ plus plus is of course useful if you're a lower level player, Super Prey Renew Potions are very good because it's a Prey Renewal and Prey Potion all in one. War Master Potions are essentially cheap or mid-level overloads which you can buy without having the Herbal level. Grand Melee Potions are the same but just for the melee combat stats being Strength, Attack and Defense. Bruise and Restores are always a good combination because Sourdough and Bruise, the flasks at least, are 6k life points, aka 6,000 life points, which is much more per inventory slot than a normal rock tail. Of course, combo overloads are also very useful if you're a higher level player, like supreme overloads or overload salves. So I think you guys get the point now, so let's get into some information about the monsters and crystals in the kiln. Now there are more crystals than you see on screen to pick up in the kiln, like the magic ranged and melee crystals, which boost your melee ranged or magic defense and attack, but decrease your defense. Don't worry about those. The only ones you want to be worrying about are the invulnerability, restoration, and maybe occasionally the constitution crystal for the final boss, because it was actually nerfed. It used to be much better just healing you up and basically making you invincible for three minutes, but it's no longer the case, which is sad. So onto the crystals. The first one, the invulnerability crystal, which does exactly what it says. It makes you invulnerable for 30 seconds, except for special damage from the deals, especially during wave 28. But this crystal spawns at the middle rock at waves 1, 13 and 25 and are definitely worth picking up, especially for the double jad wave, which comes on wave 36. Next up is the Constitution Crystal, spawning on waves 11, 23 and 35, which boosts your total HP by 50%, and it lasts 3.5 minutes. This is only really useful if you want to have high HP, so you cannot be one-shot by either the Jads, or destroyed by the tentacles at the final boss called Harakon. Onto the Restoration Crystal. This crystal is basically a full prayer and HP potion in one, because it instantly restores all your HP and prayer points. You find these on waves 3, 15 and 27. Definitely worth picking these up for any slot in your inventory. Next up, I briefly want to speak about the monsters in the kill you want to look out for, which are only three in fact, one which you'll only encounter on the final wave being the final boss. Okay, so, 
First off, the Dills. These are extremely dangerous and you can find these on waves 5, 19 and 28. These are dangerous not because of the fact that they hit hard, they only hit hard with their special attack, but because you have to crack their shell before you can actually damage and kill them. You do this by equipping your melee weapon and having a pickaxe in your tool belt, which you most likely have, especially if you've completed the quests or have done any mining whatsoever, and you just crack them like that and they're pretty easy. You do want to turn off your prayers though, as otherwise they'll be using that special attack which does hit 2k's more often than usual. There's only one deal that spawns on wave 5 and wave 19, and at wave 28, 6 of them spawn at the same time. The next monster you want to look out for are the Jads. Now you will have an encountered one Jad to receive your fire cape in the fight caves, but this one had healers. The ones in the fight kiln do not. They spawn on wave 10, 20, 30, 34, 35, and 36, there's a double Jad wave. Now, I do have a full melee guard for Jad if you want to kill Jad with melee, but I'll be showing you guys the attacks of Jad and how to counter them. But basically, what you want to do is put your prayers, melee, ranged, and magic all in your action bar to keybind them and easily switch them when you need to. With a magic attack, Jad will rear up on his hind legs and shoot a fireball at you. With a ranged attack, Jad will stomp the ground and a rock will fall on top of you. With a melee attack, Jad will swipe you. If you're standing in melee distance, always put your melee prayer on right after switching to ranged or magic for a different Jad attack, as the swipe is super fast. Now, if you are killing Jad with melee, you can actually get him with a Noxious Scythe without him using the melee attacks. If you're standing in the exact same location as I am, behind the rock, which is kind of like a little safe spot for Jad, with one tile in between you two. But I have noticed that sometimes Jad does glitch and he will still melee attack you anyways. And if you guys are wondering, in this video clip, I did move forward on purpose for Jad to melee attack me to show you where you would be standing if he would be able to hit you. And of course, the final boss, Harakon, you definitely want to watch out for, but don't worry, I'll explain the mechanics of this boss in this guide. He will only spawn on wave 37, which is the last wave of the fight kiln before you get your kiln cape or onyx reward. Now, here's a clip of me showing you how to get to the actual fight kiln, but if you do have the Tokal Zer, you can actually teleport, and this will not cost you any charges whatsoever. Though if you don't know how to get there, use a boat to go to Karamja from Port Sarim, then go inside the Tsar place and follow the video up to the fight kiln entrance. Just for you guys' information, if I were you, I'd summon your familiar and drink an extra sip of a weapon poison and your stat boosting potion and prayer renewals and stuff like that before going in, then filling up your inventory with fresh potions so that you're ready to go and you already have one boost of those potion sips. When you're ready, go inside. When you get the set of chat options, choose Let's Fight. And when you get the extra set of chat options, choose Let's Fight. Or choose Let's Fight and make it quick if you want faster spawns after every wave has ended. If you're a lower level player, I suggest you do the slower spawns so that you can regenerate or heal or whatever in between. Just take your time and you'll get through this kiln. When you first start, if you're a low level player or actually if you just want to save your food, use this L-shaped safe spot rock. This rock can be used up to wave 21. After that, you will have to use the middle. Always, when standing in the middle, stand to the left north side of the rock. But do not worry as I'll be mentioning this throughout the guide when you do need to go to that middle rock, especially when a Jad wave is coming up. The fight kiln is smooth sailing until wave 5. This is when your first deal will spawn. Just finish off everything and ignore the deal for now. When you're ready, equip your melee armor and weapon and start cracking the deal's armor. If he uses his special attack too much, it's because you're using your prayers or you're standing too close to him too often and he's just an angry boy then just hit and run him. The best abilities to crack the dual shell are abilities that hit multiple times, like bleeds, like dismember, slaughter, or just abilities that hit twice, like quake or hurricane. Once you've cracked the dual's armor, kill him with your melee weapon or your magic range or whatever weapon, just finish him off and you'll be set for the next wave. Then just go back to your safe spot or stand in the middle if you wish to. 
When finishing wave 9, be sure to stand where I am standing north of the rock. This way, when you first start the wave, Jan will not immediately attack you. This is so for the entire kiln until you get up to the Jad of wave 35, which will spawn in a weird location. But do not worry about that just now. Get ready, just finish the Jad off, then finish the wave and a cutscene will play which you can skip by just clicking on screen. On wave 19, another deal will spawn. Just finish everything off, then equip your melee armor and weapon and just crack the deal and kill the deal. Very simple. Do keep in mind that on wave 20, a Jad will spawn, so get back to your northern side of that middle rock to stay safe from the immediate Jad attack. Unless you don't give a shit, of course. Then drink a prayer potion, re-overload and make sure you have enough prayer, step out and kill Jad. After you've killed Jad, a cutscene will play, and after this cutscene, wave 21 will begin. On wave 21, a bunch of little melee golems will spawn. These are very easy, just pray melee, lure them as seen on the video, then quickly run behind that long-shaped rock. Then you can just safe spot them, and they're in a cluster, so you can easily finish them off. Unless, of course, you're using melee weapons, then you'll just have to kill them with AoE abilities like Quake and Hurricane in the middle. The thing is, at this point in time, the L-shaped rock is actually gone, and you will not have a very good safe spot anymore throughout the kiln. You will have to stand in the middle, which is an optimal location, especially if you have long-range weapons, but sometimes when you pull out to kill some monsters, you will actually get attacked by sometimes two or even three monsters at the same time. This does suck, but yeah, this is why you have food with you. You can try to avoid this by turning auto retaliate off and letting the monsters walk towards you before they attack so you do not have to step out at all times. Do keep in mind that most of the monsters on these waves up to 30 will be mostly melee monsters. So if you're using magic, you will have a big advantage. After wave 27, the big deal wave will start. Be sure to turn off your prayers and run to the northwestern corner of the map. First kill off the big mage, then start cracking the deals one by one. Luckily, the aggro distance of the deals is not very large, so you can easily avoid them by just running away or staying away from them and just cracking them easily and calm one by one. It's generally a very easy wave, but be sure to keep your HP up and do not screw around with your interface like I was doing in the video. Try to have an action bar for your melee weapon to crack the deals. I just couldn't bother to make one for this guide as I turned mine into a skilling one. But yeah, that's off topic. Let's keep on going on with the guide. At wave 30, another Jad will spawn. Be sure to stand north of the rock again. Just finish the Jad off and then you'll get a cutscene and then the island will become even smaller. From this point on, it's literally smooth sailing until wave 34, 35, 36 and 37. 34 and 35 will be two Jad waves and 36 will be the double Jad wave. After the cutscene has played on wave 34, be sure to ready up to kill Jad. Then finish off the other monsters and stand at the north of your rock or spawn immediately. The next wave will be another Jad wave, but this time the Jad will actually be immediately able to attack you. Get your prayer up, re-overload and get ready for Jad. But first, kill off the big melee guy, because if you do not, he will hit hard while you're killing Jad and he may be able to kill you if you do not keep an eye on your HP. So keep prayer switching and kill the melee guy first. Then calmly finish off Jad, then finish the other parts of the wave. Right after this wave, you may actually want to pop an invulnerability crystal because the double Jad wave will spawn or start. I actually almost messed up and KO'd myself, but luckily that did not happen. This is why you use a invulnerability crystal. Then stand north of the rock, finish one Jad off, then finish the other Jad off, and you're literally done with the entire fight kiln, except for the final boss, which will require most of the food you have in your inventory, or familiar. Now the final boss fight, aka Harakon, is pretty simple, but you'll be eating a lot of food. Pray ranged or magic against the tentacles, depending on what style you're weakest against, and be ready to build up your adrenaline to 100% on the tentacles. Then, look around for Harakon's head to pop up. Then what you want to do is use Sunshine, Death Swiftness, Metamorphosis, Zerk, and just use up all your abilities until you get to the thresholds, then destroy Harakon with those thresholds, 
but he will pop down around two thresholds in unless you're using adrenaline potions. Now he will dive down, but again, he will dive back up. So just repeat the process, build your adrenaline up to 100%, get ready, try to hide from most of the tentacles, keep your health up using a constitution crystal could be useful at this boss. Like I said, doing the crystals part of this video, then just try to DPS as much as possible and try to get him down. Other than that, I can't really help you. Try to heal as much as you can. Try to use your enhanced Excalibur if you have it to heal a bit. Maybe soul spray on the tentacles to prevent you eating some food. And finally, once you kill the boss, you will be given the option to choose either a kiln cape or an Anka Onyx. Now you will receive a Kiln Cape for the style you did the most damage in. So let's say you did the most damage in Magic, you will be getting the Magic Kiln Cape, aka the purple one. Anyways, this is the end of my Fight Kiln Guide. I hope you guys enjoyed and found it helpful. If you did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.